Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Friday, August 30th, 1.30 a.m. Mountain Time, 2019. Follow-up on the 6.3 band in Oregon, Cascadia Fracture Zone. Now, I'm not referring to the Cascadia Subduction Zone. The Fracture Zone includes the mid-ocean ridges at the Juan de Fuca Plate. So heads up, lots of movement happening. Not only that, Cat 3-4 Hurricane Dorian closing in on Boca Raton, as we said 24 hours ago. Some media outlets are fear-mongering that Hurricane Dorian could hit Cat 5. There's not a single model that suggests that. Total shite, New York Post. You should be ashamed. Tidal phenomenon could make Dorian's impact even worse. The king tides are expected to start Friday evening when this storm hits Florida. And it's going to be a sharda. No Cat 5, but Cat 3-4 and king tides mean record flooding and epic devastation. Keep calm, it's boom time. Kennedy Space Center braces for Hurricane Dorian as NASA protects launch infrastructure. Yeah, that means there's barely enough money to keep it going. And what the loss is here, whoa, as Hurricane Dorian launches towards Florida, NASA is working to secure key launch infrastructure at Kennedy Space Center. In a tweeted video Thursday, the space agency said that Huracan 6 status, Hurricane Condition 4, whatever that means. And this guy's mouth looks like that. Holy sh! what is going on? If we do not get Huracan 1 status, that means that Dorian is here and we're ready for impact, he added. Whatever that means. Let's hear it from the mouths of babes. Please, can we get it? We're out here on a beautiful morning at the Rocket Ranch, but we're actually in Huracan 4 status, or Hurricane Condition 4. What that means is that within 72 hours, or about 3 days, we're expecting winds of up to 50 knots. For those that are not on a nautical vessel, that's about 50 the vehicle assembly building for safekeeping. If we do get to a Hurricane 1 status, that means that Dorian is here and we're ready for impact. So what you've just learned there is that NASA is funded for these white jackets and this brand new building, but barely any talent or anything else. Wow. What a shit show there. And a fraud. Heads up. It's boom time. Lots to go. State of emergency for 12 South Georgia counties ahead of Hurricane Dorian. Unfortunately, the new model suggests it's not going to be nowhere near Georgia. So these douchebags have no idea what they're talking about. Stick with the program. Airlines brace for Hurricane Dorian as storm threatens to snarl Labor Day weekend travel. Yeah, all the way up the East Coast. Right up your... We're talking hundreds of millions of dollars lost, billions. Not only that, the amount of money lost due to the destruction from the storm may tilt, yes, the world. And the Dow Jones will drop. Mark my words. Hurricane Dorian expected to intensify into Cat 4. We agree. Poses a growing danger to Florida and southeastern U.S. We're going to get to the models. Stick with us. Look at how lame this is from CNN. This is what Dorian looked like from space. It's a disgrace. CNN is like a puppet show. Wow. I think I'm upside down or something. Wow. Is that like a big swirl? Is that climate change? Global warming? That looks like Al Gore's navel. Here we are at the Hurricane Center. <laughs> At NOAA, coastal watches and warnings forecast come from the storm center. Major hurricane cat one, two, three. As it approaches the coast and goes boom on Boca Raton, remaining a hurricane as it hits central Florida and creates a cone of devastation for hundreds of square miles, thousands of square miles. This shit is going to be real. It's going to be insane in the membrane. Mark my words. Key messages for Dorian. 
The risk of life-threatening storm surge and hurricane force winds this weekend continues to increase in the northwestern Bahamas. If you're in that Mars, Marsh Islands area and you can get out, oh God, get out. Because in two days, it's going to be insane there. There's an increasing likelihood of life-threatening storm surge along portions of the Florida East Coast late this weekend, early next week. Although it is too soon to determine where the highest storm surge will occur. Diamond at the Oppenheimer Ranch Project will be on it and will be reporting on it in just 24 to 48 hours as the storm makes landfall. The risk of devastating hurricane force winds along the Florida East Coast and Peninsula late this weekend and early next week continues to increase. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when this baby kicks your ass and cuts off the two major highways to the north. Heed warnings, regardless of the exact tract of Dorian, heavy rains are expected to occur over most of central and southern Florida and all of Florida and northern Florida and up the east coast. Heads up! <coughs> I just did a dab. This is a serious storm and we're going to be Walking you through the model here. Here you see 125 mile per hour winds suggested Monday evening. Let's take you to Saturday, which is Saturday in Pagosa. Let's run you through the European model here. The most current model, and all the spaghettis are lining up here. It's going to basically hit Marsh Harbor Sunday afternoon crushing Freeport. If you have land in the Bahamas, it's over, Johnny. And here we are Monday afternoon into Monday evening. Landfall at Boca Raton. And let's just look at some of the wind speeds. Oh my goodness. That's not what we want. Where's my cursor? 134. We just stuck it there. 135. Whew. Holy mackerel. Let's see the onshore here. Palm Beach, 113, 120, 122. Fort Lauderdale, 120, 112. Are you kidding me? Let's look at the speeds in Boca, 124, 129 at the beach, Boynton Beach, 127, Palm Beach, 120. It's not funny. This is a devastating storm. And let's move it through Monday through Tuesday, which is your lose day in South Central Florida. There it is. Midday Tuesday. The entire southern tip of Florida engulfed in this storm. Dorian is going to wreak havoc. 85 mile per hour gusts, 93 on the models. We just saw 93. That's devastating. My brother lives here south of Cape Coral, I think. Yeah, right here in Estero. Let's move the model through Tuesday afternoon into the evening. This is going to move its way up the Florida Peninsula, according to the models, and rafe the entire state up through Daytona with inundating rain. And then it's going to re-intensify due to the warm waters off the, offshore and rafe the coast. Similar to other storms that have moved in this fashion, time immemorial. So those of you that are on the East Coast, prepare for the worst. Because it could even go offshore here at the Delmarva and re-intensify. Maybe become a hurricane again here. Off the coast of New Jersey. Anything can happen by Saturday. Because it is Saturday, by the way.
in Pagosa. You never know. Early season snow could be coming to Colorado. Holy mackerel. All the snow hasn't even melted. What does that mean? Is our glaciers building? Late summer cold temperatures and snow could be on the horizon. According to a report from the National Weather Service, a cold front will move across western Colorado midweek. The lowest recorded temperature in the state on Tuesday was 34. Holy shit. That means we're about to freeze. That's in Craig and Leadville. That's about 11,000 feet. And I'm a footman. Snow overload expected for winter 2019-2020, says Old Farmer's Almanac. And there's the picture to prove it. Do you see that? Snow falls on 2nd Street, Harrisburg, Sunday, March 3rd, 2019. Expect the same this year and worse. Most of Pennsylvania will be warmer than normal with above precipitation. Are you f***ing kidding me? You can suck it. Snow is falling in the middle of summer. All the way down here into Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, British Columbia, Alberta, Eastern Canada. Are you? September 15th, a day to remember. Look at the snows coming. September 10th and 11th through the mid Craton. This is up to a foot or more of snow in the high mountains. Holy sh... That will cover snow that is still there from last year. And I don't know if that's called glaciation or what, but I think it is. Wild weather hits a snow blankets coastal town. This is New South Wales, where it's supposed to be snowing. But it's going to continue to snow all the way through spring and into summer. It's a bummer. The full force of winter is expected to lash New South Wales again today as intense rain bands move north. Roads were turned into rivers overnight as Sydney was drenched by heavy rain. Shrimps were on the barbie and most in Sydney north received 74 millimeters in the 24 hours at 8.30 a.m. with the heaviest fall recorded across the city, which was totally shitty, while the central coast, Gosford and Wyong, copped 110 millimeters. Backyards and carports and Coffs Harbor turned white as the hailstorms battered the coastal town. Heads up, said many. Some excited residents claimed it was snow, but the Weather Bureau has confirmed it was just a dusting. And in fact, it was just tiny hail. Wow. Obfuscate from the truth much. Seismic update, 5.3 kicking off at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Thankfully, the earth is swelling, relieving the stress from the 6.3 band in Oregon earthquake, 8.30 a.m. local time today. No tsunami. Who's your mommy? 4.9 Indonesia. No quakes of note, but we are moving into a oh, corona hole coupling moment. Now this baby is big. And all major earthquakes on Earth are, well, the majority, let's say 90%, associated with major equatorial coronal holes, which we're about to couple with any moment. Friday, which is your coronal hole day. Now, this space weather is going to bring a plasma stream coupling directly to our North Pole and South Pole. The energy in the solar wind is going to bring energy into the global electric circuit like you have not seen before. And in times past, these types of electrical surges from our sun increase global weather on Earth, including the hurricane that's about to hit Florida. It's all happening at the same time, as if it was foretold. Discover solar wind showing, showing nothing jiggy. And let's look at the latest volcanic ash advisories. <clears throat> and if you've been following the story with Shivalush, Here's the Friday, August 30th report. Shivalush erupting just moments ago to 35,000 feet. Who's reporting on that? And uh, 12 hours before that, Shivalush on the 29th erupting to where's 34,000 feet. These are all upper atmosphere 
gigantic eruptions. No one is reporting on it. These are the after effects of the 70,000 foot eruption that we reported on that no one is claiming ever happened. In fact, they're backtracking. Here's a third eruption in the last 24 hours to 34,000 feet. So we have a 34,000 foot eruption just 36 hours ago, followed by a 34,000 foot eruption, followed by a 35,000 foot eruption today at Chivalouche. Heads up. That's a lot of eruptions. The other issue that has come up, which is quite extraordinary, I have to say, because we're talking about this. We're going to get to uh, that. Oh, that's like candy in the basket. Wait for it. Wait for it. Look at the jacket he has on. Andrew Yang advocates for space mirrors. Higher ground to combat climate change. Now this entrepreneur and Democrat presidential hopeful, Andrew Yang, released a massive plan on his website that lays out his ideas for saving the planet. It's so pathetic that they could only take half of his picture barely above his armpit. And he looks totally American, doesn't he? Including space mirrors, that's in his plan, and moving Americans to higher ground, just like we did with the... Anyway. Yeah. The right time to deal with this crisis was decades ago. We've waited too long, so we need to act fast and recognize that all options need to be on the table in order to adapt to the change world we live in. Mitigating behaviors that make it worse and reversing the damage already done. Yeah, well, the damage was done by politicians. And the fact that they've reduced and there are reductions on actual pollution and increases on plant food. Now, you want to know more about the ruse? Check out Sky News Australia. And this man in his snappy jacket, it's not all glitz and glamour, folks. It's actual facts. And they're right in your fucking face. And if you can't deal with it, you can fucking suck it. Do adapt. It's quite extraordinary, I have to say, because we're talking about this uh, whole business about fake news. It's been a great week for fake news about global warming, sections of the media leading the way. Bear with us. Clearly, they don't want us to know this. So while we wait for this to pass up, don't get your panties in a bunch. There's much more to come. Heads up. Providing a solution to the worst ever prediction in physics. The cosmological constant. The other issue that oh, has come up back. which is quite extraordinary, I have to say, because we're talking about... The now... This is worth a listen, no matter how long it takes. We're going to let this parse up. And that's a boom. Because this guy's the bomb. Come on, let's do it. Do it together. All right, clearly they're going to make this difficult for us. So, The cosmological constant introduced a century ago by Albert Einstein in his theory of general relativity is a thorn in the side of physicists. Which is quite extraordinary, I have to say, <laughs> because we're talking about this uh, whole business about fake news. It's been a great week for fake news about global warming, sections of the media leading the way. Remember? Sinking islands in the Pacific even though peer-reviewed science has found the majority of the islands are increasing in land size, lies about... I can't even believe how they're doing this to us. They won't even play this. This is crazy. It's so crazy 
that I am going to stay on all night until we watch this section of video. So bear with us. I'm actually going to refresh it because this is getting pathetic. Pathetic, I tell you. The other issue. Let's just pause that up. Let me finish this. Now, proving a solution to the worst ever prediction in physics. Not only that, let's talk about all of cosmology. Let's talk about the standard model. The fact that the sun is some kind of nuclear plant that's going to burn out eventually and all that bullshit about gravity. They can suck it. All of it's been disproven. 90% is unexplained and 100% is explained by the electric universe model. Now, the cosmological constant introduced a century ago by Albert Einstein in his theory of general bullshit was pushed by the mainstream as Velikovsky was pushed out. And right before Einstein's death, he admitted defeat and everyone covered it up. Now, it's a thorn in the side of physicists and physics in general. The difference between the theoretical prediction of this parameter and its measurements based on astronomical observation is in, of the order of 10 to the 121st. It's no surprise to learn that this estimate is considered the worst in the entire history of physics. Do you know how fucking bad that is? It's almost as bad as climate science. And we'll get to that. That has come up, which is quite extraordinary, I have to say, because we're talking about this uh, whole business about fake news. It's been a great week for fake news about global warming, sections of the media leading the way. Remember, sinking islands in the Pacific, even though peer-reviewed science has found the majority of the islands are increasing in land size. Lies about the Great Barrier Reef. I spoke last week to Professor Peter Ritt about that. Lying about the drought being linked to climate change, a claim which even Andy Pittman from the Climate Change Research Centre has admitted is completely false. But over the weekend, the Amazon rainforest is on fire. And everyone from our billion dollar ABC blaming, of course, climate change. They mean global warming, which is rubbish. But when you look at the data, and you've got this French President Macron calling the Amazon an international crisis. When you look at the data, the stories are all fake news. Green leftist nonsense designed to brainwash the public, especially gullible and naive children. Macron says the Amazon produces 20% of the world's oxygen. Well, even the notorious climate alarmist Michael Mann says the 20% figure is too high. The true number is closer to 6%. Then we're told the Amazon is burning at record rates, unprecedented levels. Is this because a non-lefty is the president of Brazil? So we can blame him? Bolsonaro, the facts are that fires occur in the Amazon region at this time every year. NASA's Earth Observatory states this, quote, as of August 16, 2019, an analysis of NASA satellite data indicated the total fire activity across the Amazon basin this year has been close to the average in comparison with the last 15 years. NASA's satellite data provides a daily update of global wildfires. Its data is compiled in the Global Fire Emissions Database. So are all these pictures and stories designed to attack the right-wing President Bolsonaro, who says he won't live and die by the Paris Agreement? Because the latest data unequivocally shows that this year, currently, is a low fire season in the Amazon, the exact opposite of what the media are reporting. Now, for monitoring and the recording of fires, the Amazon is divided into 10 separate regions. The combined annual cumulative number of fires in the Amazon for 2019, as at August 23, stands at 105,508. Now, while that number sounds a lot, this compares with 205,000 fires by the 23rd of August in 2005, and the average total number of fires between 2003 and 2019 average approximately 120,000 by this time you this time each year. Now, at the moment, not 120,000. We're not even 100, anywhere near it. 105,508. Therefore, the so-called record being spread across the media is half the 2005 record and below the average from when the data started 17 years ago. In fact, in comparison with the past 17 years, 
and the record started in 2003. For the year to the 23rd of August 2019, this year ranks only eighth in the highest number of fires. And the trend in the Amazon has been one of declining fires. Even the good old New York Times has reported that the vast majority of fires burning in Brazil this year are not in the rainforest. They're fires on agricultural land. The New York Times said, and I quote, scientists studying satellite image data from the fires in the Amazon rainforest said that most of the fires are burning on agricultural land. Where the forest had already been cleared, most of the fires were likely set by farmers preparing the land for next year's planting, a common agricultural practice, said the scientist from the University of Maryland. But Macron, the French president, called it at the weekend an international crisis, and to the members of the G7 summit, he said, let's discuss this emergency, first order, in two days. I'm also advised, by the way, that the photo posted by Macron on the internet is not of the current fires. It's a stock photo, at least 20 years old, which can be bought on the internet, taken by a Lauren McIntyre, who died. Can you believe this shit? I can't. No, I can't. ...in 2003, at the age of 86. So, here are lies of gold medal proportions, all designed to feed the climate change alarmist movement and the ABC in Australia. A billion dollars of your money can't be trusted to report the truth. And as the lies gain momentum, there are now reports across the world of protests at Brazilian embassies. Why? Easy to answer. The Brazilian leader Bolsonaro has threatened to quit the Paris Agreement. He's not a lefty. Proof yet again that the culture and ideological wars, the lefties versus us, are alive and well, even in the Amazon. The other issue... Can you believe this shit? It's hilarious. It's like the Dark Ages. Astronomers are baffled. Climate change is real. And it's your fault. NASA is sending a helicopter to Mars. It'll be the first aircraft to fly on another planet. Now, let's just unravel the bullshit right here. A lot of you people think that rich people, billionaires, have some kind of secret spaceport on the moon or on Mars, where they're all going to escape during the Grand Solar Minimum. Have you even thought about that idea? Do you know how many cosmic rays are in space? Do you know how difficult it is to even live there for six months? The atrophy to the body? The fact that we know nothing about space? And now let's just consider the fact that, yeah, they're underground. They've already mastered this. Can you imagine going into your basement and living there the rest of your life? Is that where you want to go? Do you think that's a goal? Is that a goal? Let's all go underground and live there forever. Get a clue. This is not what is supposed to happen. We're wasting our money. No one is going to space. Billionaires are... <laughs> they may go underground, but we will find them. Everyone is losing their mind about the possibility of recession. But in reality, the U.S. economy is fine. And here is Captain America with a suit on to prove it. I, I can't make this shit up. I just report on it. It's the best I can do. I'm just a dago that moved to the woods. But the shit's about to fall. Deep sea sediments reveal solar system chaos. An advance in dating geologic archives. A day is the time for Earth to make one complete rotation on its axis. A year is the time for Earth to make one revolution around the sun. Wow, I feel like I'm in third grade. Reminders that basic units of time and periods on Earth are intimately linked to our planet's motion in space relative to the sun. How about the fact that climate is controlled by the sun? How about that? Why don't you report on that? In fact, we mostly live our lives to the rhythm of these astronomical cycles, including climate. <laughs> 
Wow, is this like a precursor at physics.org to the reality of what we're living? Now, deep sea sediments reveal solar system chaos. Of course they do. I'm a paleoclimatologist, and I know that this data is insane. Insane in the membrane. And there have been chaotic periods, time immemorial. But we're more interested on the short-term cyclicity on Earth, which we know happens and we report on regularly like a boom. And we can't even get this up here, can we? Ryugo. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. That's why we're here. We're here to guide you through. Now, th this year is predicted to be one of the harshest winters ever on record in modern history. This is going back to 1860s. We're going to break some records in some regions that are insane. Some regions will be warm but just a small amount. The majority of regions will be record cold and insane. And we're going to report on them. We're all also going to report on other science as it comes in. Amazing new photos of asteroid Ryugu uh, present a new mystery. Who clean up all the dust? Now, some of the asteroids we've seen have dust on the surface because of magnetic clinging and fining. It's actually sorting that's happening due to magnetic activity, electrical sorting, making dust form here. So in this case, this particular piece of rock is, yeah, the wrong polarity. So no dust can stick to me. It's opposite. You know, when you get all that in the fall that sticks to you and all the sparks that happen. This is the reverse. This is a repulsion object. Clearly. Also blown from the surface of a planet. It looks very volcanic. So this looks like a big chunk of lava, in my opinion. Hayabusa 2. Billions of dollars spent for nothing. We could be feeding the homeless. We could be helping humanity, but we refuse. <clears throat> it, for, for some reason, when you get billions of dollars, you fail to see the inequities of our system. The powers that be don't give a fuck about you, man. What they do care about is the bottom line. They want to make more money. So they hire people to convince you that they do care about you. But they don't. And as you continue to believe that they do care about you, or that maybe the majority of these commercials are real, you will continue to feed the narrative that depletes you of humanity and life. Connection with source, nature. Your innate ability to be adaptable and survive and thrive alone without the use of plastic shit from the dollar store. I can't break it down any simpler than that. If you think you need something from the mini mart, you're sick. I feel sick when I go in the mini mart and I think I need something. 